And now a quick word from our sponsors here at Viral Hip Hop News. Hey man here from Viral Hip Hop News letting my people know to go grab this bottle of miracle food right now. Shopadopter.org put together some of the best ingredients on God's green earth to help your immune system, give you a cleanse and reboot that your body deserves. Don't wait for your miracle. Grab it in miracle food right now. Let's go. Go purchase the original crime drama series by Daniel Webb, The House of Lazenberry, The House of Lazenberry 1978, and The House of Lazenberry, A Time to Hill at Archway Publishing or wherever books are sold right now. Side who understood you? The Great. position of power in the courtroom is not the defense attorney. And it's also mm. not the judge, as most people think. When you're in a criminal courtroom, the position of power is the prosecutor. The prosecutor is the reason that you're there. Whenever the prosecutor decides, you could not be there because they could say, oh, you know what, mm, never mind, and dismiss the case. The reason for the entire prosecution is that the prosecutor has decided that it's worthy of such. So I started to realize, well, if I really want to do something that makes a difference for people who have my same walk of life, my same background, the position of power for me to do that from is the prosecutor's table, not the defense table. You know, it was interesting when, as you were talking, you said you're the DA and the prosecutor. I was like, whoa, why the hell would she want to be the, the same thing you just uh, after you articulated? That's the first thing I thought about, like, why? Why that? But then as you articulated it, it made me think it, it's very interesting. So I want to know from your perspective, now being in that position, what is the level of fairness and unfairness when it comes to the justice system and um, black and brown people, male and female, when it comes to certain cases and um, when it comes through your desk and things like that, in your opinion, what kind of level of fairness have you seen um, through, during your time as being a prosecutor? Well, this answer is going to, it won't shock you, but it will dishearten you. But I like to be honest when I'm you know, faced with these questions. I did not see a very fair or a very equal system. And that is the truth. Um, prosecutors are given a large amount of autonomy. And so what that means is a case is a misdemeanor or a violation on one desk and a felony on another desk. Mm. So when you add race and all these other things into it, you also have whose desk did you land on? It's almost like you're, you know, you're gambling. And so on one person's desk, you end up with a very level-headed, fair person who says, oh, you know what? I'm sensing that you have maybe some anger issues, violation in an anger management program. On another person's desk, they say, well, maybe they do have anger issues, but I feel that, you know, based on what I've discussed with the witness, this is egregious and I'm going to go for a misdemeanor. And if I can get a lower class felony out of it, I'll take that too. And that is the wide range of autonomy. You know, I, I it really kills me to say this because as an attorney, I love the practice of the law and I don't want to besmirch the practice. Mm -hmm. but I also don't believe in this veil where we hide behind the curtain and there are things going on behind there that we don't tell people about, especially when it affects other people. You know, um, I saw cases go to trial that should not have gone to trial because the attorneys involved wanted to do a trial for whatever reason. Right. Um, I saw a lot of things that were extremely disheartening. I saw a lot of politics playing into the everyday lives of people who had no idea that politics were involved in their case. Mm. You know, I saw decisions being made on cases because of the optics. Oh, well, you know, this politician might be up for re-election. And so this person and that person doesn't want those optics. So this is what we have to do with this case, regardless of what should actually be done. So I did not see a high level of fairness. But to that, I will say, uh, I saw a few young attorneys who I'm still in contact with and I'm so proud of take our stand and do what we thought was right, even though we knew that we would be facing opposition. And we faced bullying, we faced, I mean, there are attorneys that I worked with who have PTSD from the way that we were treated. Wow. But we took our stand, you know, and to this day, that dichotomy is still there. If you if you mind without you know giving us too too much specifics, can you give us a deep uh, detail or an example I should say of a situation where politics, you know, um, played a role in a case? If you can, um, I will I will say I'll give a hypothetical. Okay. 
So if hypothetically a case were to be on the radar of the politicians in the state, mm -hmm. and it was a case in which perhaps usually that person, that defendant, right, would have been treated as someone who needed some type of mental help. Well, hypothetically, if a politician gets involved and they decide that they are taking the stance of being tough on those sort of crimes, mm -hmm. then that person won't receive, as I said in my previous example, the violation in the program because that doesn't give the appearance of being tough, right? So now the politician will step in and say, hey, listen, little ADA, which is slang for assistant district attorney, mm -hmm. hey, listen, little ADA, I understand you want to do the right thing and all of that, but actually I made my whole reelection platform on being tough on these crimes. So um, the program for that person is not going to work. We're going to have to go for jail time on that. <clears throat> and no money, no amount of money would be able to change that. As far as lawyer and power and things like that, like somebody of lower class status. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. That could make a difference. Okay. Uh, whenever you have um, people are afraid of people who are financially established. Mm -hmm. So it does make a difference. I think it's more likely that politics can sway something when you have the little guy involved. Right. Mm -hmm. Once you have someone who is um, financially stable, has their own representation, has private representation, mm -hmm. you know, um, then you really get into something that could make a difference in the political standpoint. I will say though, in general, because this is one thing I have to give the state of New York, you know, if you give the, the bad, you have to give the good. Right. The public defenders in the state of New York are amazing. I mean, legal aid, some of the most amazing attorneys I've seen come out of the Bronx defenders and legal aid in the Bronx. Mm. Um, but if you're talking about politics getting involved, yeah, money can help. But anything other than money or status probably would not get you get a defendant out of a rough situation where politics is involved. You, you, you kind of jumped in, jumped uh, to my next question, the public defender. I'm glad you did, though. I was going to ask you about, you know, that next. Um, in some cases, I've seen great public defenders. And in some cases, they get so overwhelmed with a workload that they can't provide the type of representation that a private counsel, you know, could, um, you know, give their clients. So with that being said, um, I know I kind of know the answer already to this, but is it is it better to, you know, um, have you seen, I should say, you know, um, that situation where somebody has a public defender and they, they lost it. If they got a private counsel, they probably could have won. Have you ever seen examples like that? I have not. You know, as I said, I have <laughs> seen amazing, amazing legal aid and Bronx defenders. And I mean, just top notch and attorneys <laughs> who really fought for their clients. But I have to admit you know, there's always that little element there. A lot of it is the rivalry between the ADAs and the and legal aid. Okay. So they do great for their clients, but I think they're fueled by the rivalry there in the state of New York. Hit, pop, hit, pop, shit, hit, pop, hit, bars is back. Hit, pop, sand hit, and pop, oh god, hit, pop, what's hit, up with you? Pop. I done watched them niggas do interview after interview They not culture vultures, the culture something they been into So if you never gave them a view, I recommend you do Cause when they question guests, they message is not subliminal It don't matter if you a rookie